All right, hello and welcome to another online sales chat interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online uh, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Daniel Lemon, who is in Los Angeles, California. How are you doing today, Daniel? Hey, John, I'm really good. I'm really good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know Daniel, Daniel's a startup co-founder. He's best-selling author. He was an early member of Google's global communications team and obviously did a pretty good job, uh, seen as they're fairly well-known these days. Uh, and he's helped launch products across the world. And he's the co-founder of Selective War. Is that right? Did I say that? You said that so perfectly. I oh, almost should hire you to do some voiceover. <laughs> yeah, a food intelligence startup. And his new book uh, with his co-author, Jay Bear, is Talk Triggers, Exploring Word of Mouth Marketing. So, um, Danny, why don't you start off, give us a kind of background into the genesis of Talk Triggers and, and what this book is all about. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, word of mouth marketing as a concept has been around since cavemen sold rocks and ferns <laughs> to other cavemen. It's not a new concept. And in fact, it's very, been a very well studied one over the years. But what we sort of discovered in looking at it deeper, my, my background is in marketing. Uh, my co-author is as well, is that um, we, we discovered a lot of our consulting clients, a lot of the people we were talking to just assumed in their businesses that word of mouth happened. It mm -hmm. was kind of this assumption, but no one had an actual plan for making it happen, for igniting word of mouth. So we thought there was a real opportunity not just to showcase the importance and the vitality of word of mouth, which is certainly uh, important, and we do that in the book, but also to lay out a, a roadmap, a plan for how a business of any size really can make it happen. So that's an interesting point. So you say that people generally just kind of assume that word of mouth uh, takes place. So you assume, OK, if you provide a good product or service, that people are going to talk about that to other people. But you're saying that that doesn't happen organically. It doesn't happen organically. And in many cases, it doesn't happen by mistake. Actually, a lot of the companies we looked at, the things they're doing are very intentional and they're designed to be basically memorable enough to talk about. And it sort of comes down to to one key principle, which is is doing something operationally different in your business that is worth talking about. And we have so many examples in, in the book of businesses in all kinds of different industries doing all kinds of different things to get customers talking. But the sole purpose is to basically give people some material to work with. So if you were to say, hey, tell me about sales pop, I can say I, I can. I can tell you what they do, but let me tell you what's really cool about that company. Mm -hmm. And and it gives them that material to work with. Okay, so let's uh, so maybe give us a couple of examples of where you've seen this work really well. Because like I said, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, oh, okay, I, didn't, I don't know how you deliberately get word of mouth going. Yeah, I'll give you a couple of examples from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I am, uh, in addition to having written the book, I'm also a, a co-founder of a software company, a Selective Org. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, so I study word of mouth in that context because it's not as obvious sometimes in a software setting how to do things that encourage word of mouth. Uh, one of the companies I think who frankly does this the very, very best is MailChimp. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with them, yeah. they do a really good job of this with Freddy, their, their little icon. He's kind of everywhere in the product. Um, and so I think MailChimp does a really good job with that. Uh, from a software perspective, you don't expect such a little moment of delight. And there are two companies I know of in the marketing software business with monkeys as their mascot, MailChimp and SurveyMonkey. Right. No one talks about the monkey with SurveyMonkey. It's kind of a, uh, it's almost That's a forgotten element, but MailChimp, it's very intentional. Yeah, that's very true if you think about it. I mean, I don't even think you see. Do you even see a monkey icon anywhere in Survey Monkey? Not really. I'm sure you do. It's kind of it's a it's sort of a a byproduct almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is people really talk about the Mailchimp monkey. His name is Freddie. Uh, Freddie gets love on Twitter. He gets love on Facebook, and so they're using that to inspire word of mouth. Those little kind of Easter eggs in software. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you've got some of them built into your own platform that people talk about i'm not sure i haven't played around with sales pop <laughs> so how, how does somebody go about starting something like this so how do you start to be intentional in in uh generating word of mouth 
Well, it, it comes down to really looking at the customer journey and finding the gaps where you have a moment to catch their attention. Uh, in some cases, it is something that you can do a little bit better. And in, some, in other cases, it's something extra that customers, they just simply didn't expect. Uh, for example, when you check in at a Doubletree hotel, mm -hmm. have you ever stayed at a Doubletree hotel? Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. Can you tell me what happens when you check in at a Doubletree hotel? Um, it's been a while, but last time I remember, I got a cookie at least. Bingo, you get a cookie. Not only, of course, you get your room key and a thank you. You also get a warm, gooey chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so which let's that, face it, never. Thing. Which let's face it, never makes it to the room, right? <laughs> Not really. It doesn't make it very far past the yeah. elevator in my in my case, but it's it's a moment of delight. So they're doing something a little extra. In the case of Mailchimp, they're doing what what's really within the, the product journey. So uh, I, I think that the path to those insights it comes from doing a lot of customer listening and outreach. And the more you do that, the more you see it. So in in essence, um, part of what you're saying is, I mean, I guess we're we're all pretty savvy, fussy buyers today. So when we go to purchase something, when we get what we're expecting, that's kind of a baseline. We're kind of at zero. You just gave us what we we expected to pay for. It's the extra bits that count. It's it's exactly right, and it isn't doesn't have to be a grand gesture. Mm -hmm. Those just little things that make a difference, and in some cases, it over supersedes uh, the the reflex to lower your price or be the most price competitive. Sometimes you don't need to be. Uh, you you just have enough, uh, not necessarily even loyalty, just enough compassion and and therefore trust with the buyer that you can start the conversation. What is something just going back? So you you were an early early um, employee at Google, right? And um, what are some of the lessons you learned there? Because let's face it, at the time I was actually in Silicon Valley myself. At the time, um, I mm. remember Google, I remember one of our uh, somebody I worked with who went to join this Google search engine startup at a time when there were so many start you know search engines and they were big and all that. So, what are some of the lessons you learned there uh, at Google where they Google was able to emerge in what was a pretty competitive and saturated market at the time? Well, I think one of the interesting reflexes, Google, it's a struggle they've had, and it's also been the thing that's, I think, driven their business is stripping things away, mm -hmm. always going down to the basic necessity. I mean, the, that's what it became so famous for in the beginning, right? It was just a box on a screen with nothing else. Mm -hmm. And in they, there's a constant product intent at Google, everything they do in Gmail and elsewhere to strip things down to the basics. Uh, and that's a, that's a nice reflex because it, what it forces you to do is solve a single problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the best thing you can do to serve your customers, solve that one single problem. Uh, and it's not it's a it's it's an, a learned trait, not necessarily something a lot of us are good at. We want to do everything. We want to provide everything for our customers, but to make sure you're doing that one thing right first before you you get that opportunity. Yeah, so this comes back to, again, if you're saying, um, if you're going to get a reputation for something or word of mouth, um, it solving a, a real problem and solving it really well is key because you don't really get, you don't really get good press, do you, from being mediocre at a bunch of things. Nobody says, oh, well, that company's, yeah, you know, they're not, they're not the best, but they're, they're pretty mediocre at everything they do. So you'll, you'll get a mediocre experience. It'll be all right. It's exactly right. No one, no, no one talks about average. It's just mm -hmm. not. It doesn't give you any material. It's like, well, I had an, I had a, a halfway decent lunch today. May I tell you about that? <laughs> it, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. So, uh, you know, that we we assume that we have to go to this place of grand gestures. Let me give you uh, an entire brand new car, and maybe then you'll talk about my company. Uh, you don't have to do that. I mean. That's that is not the reflex that works, mm -hmm. I think. So what are some other examples where you've seen this work really, really well? Yeah, I'll give you a couple of other ones that are a little more are a little less intuitive. A cookie at, at check in is it kind of seems like an obvious mm -hmm. thing. But uh, another restaurant example in the Sacramento area, there's a restaurant called Skip's Kitchen. Skip's Kitchen is not terribly famous for much. Uh, they are 
I believe one of the top hamburger restaurants in America by s- some magazine, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a pretty basic restaurant. You go in, order your food at the counter, they give you a number and you sit down. So it's, it's a restaurant like that. Um, the, the twist they put on the experience is that rather than giving you sort of the, the, the table card in, in a little metal stand that you put on your table while you wait for your food, when you finish your order at the counter, they pull out a deck of cards. They use the same deck of cards for, for everyone, and they fan it out on the counter and say, pick a card, <laughs> any card. And so you reach in and you pick a card, and if you happen to pick the Joker, your meal is free. Oh, wow. That's pretty and cool. on average, about three people get a free meal every day. Mm-hmm. What happens when people pull the Joker and get the free meal? Oh, well, I mean, obviously, they're excited. The people around them are excited. They go bananas. I mean, yeah. they go so crazy. Uh, and everybody gets the chance to, to do that. Everybody gets that same chance. So uh, they've done this for many years to the, to the benefit of the company. They have never had to advertise a single day. And they're also in the Sacramento area, not really known as Skip's Kitchen. They're known as that Joker restaurant. All right. So it's, it's worked in their benefit for sure. So that, that's just a nice uh, element where they've just changed a little bit of the customer experience uh, just by adding that one thing. Um, another example I, I really like is a locksmith in New York. Uh, he's the top rated locksmith on Yelp in New York. He's one of the top businesses on Yelp in New York. Neither of which are easy feats. Mm-hmm. Sure. And his his talk trigger is uh, well. First of all, it's his hair. He has amazing hair. He's he's probably the most beautiful locksmith in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's that's notable to some customers. But mm-hmm. uh, when he finishes a job, he does an entire security sweep of your of your house or your apartment, and lets you know where you might be vulnerable to break in, mm-hmm. and then oils all your locks and hinges for free. Yeah. Yeah. And so people often say on Yelp in his reviews, like, I almost want to get locked out again because my experience was so great. <laughs> yeah, so what I, lo- what I love about these examples that you're saying, and I mean, obviously, you know, you have more in, in the book and, and uh, more advice is, is going back to what you've been saying through this. It's that it's not grand gestures. It's, it's find something simple that people aren't expecting that's going to delight them, that's going to make them want to talk about it, right? That's just it. And that's that's the entire formula. And remarkably enough, it works. Mm-hmm. You get you you find those right moments. Uh, it doesn't replace your other marketing. You sure. still have to keep email running. You have to keep your CRM engine running. But it gives you an extra level of security around kind of your brand. And it matters because like 20 percent of purchases are directly caused by word of mouth. Mm. So if we're not doing something there, it's money left on the table. And as I said earlier, I mean, I think that we have maybe, if I don't know whether discerning is the right word, but we certainly have a, a fussier and pickier buyer out there today. I mean, I think we're all guilty of that in our own way. So these things really matter because our expectation, we've, we've got this expectation that everything we get is going to work and going to be great. That's right. We expect things to work. We expect food to be decent, if not great. We expect hotel rooms to be clean. Uh, sometimes they're not. But uh, yeah, meeting expectations is is not a differentiator. And uh, and increasingly lowering your prices is also not a differentiator. That you can chase that train all day, and it's mm-hmm. going to keep going faster and faster. Yeah. So I mean, and so in a commodity, in a world where. Uh, a lot of people perceive products and services as being commodities, whether they are or not, perceptions, reality, as we know. Um, these are the things where you can start to, in, in simple ways, you can start to differentiate yourself if, and, and maybe reinforce your product as being better by doing that as, as opposed to just trying to rely on people seeing that your product or service is better than someone else's. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, it's just a fact in, of, of economics that commoditization is is basically going to happen in every industry. It's uh, everything's been disrupted, reinvented, changed. So we're all going to be commoditized at some point, <laughs> probably even personal, personally, you know. Um, uh, and so it 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 behooves us then to find some other path. Yeah, which is why I've started handing out cookies to everybody I meet. Uh... 
<laughs> overcome my person, my commoditized personality. <laughs> it, might be, it might be dating really hard if that ever happens. Like we're all basically the same humans at this point. Exactly. <laughs> um, so before we go, Dan, do you have any last piece of advice for people who want to get more? Obviously, the you know, the book talk triggers. But have you other other advice for people who maybe take a look at their business today and say, okay, am I doing everything I can to to provoke good? conversations among my customers? Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. I think that, that that conversation needs to happen with three kinds of customers in a business. One is your, your current customers, obviously. One is probably customers you've lost who have left you for lower price or better service. And uh, another category is, is customers you never had. You, you maybe gave them a p- proposal, but you lost the business. Mm-hmm. So the in all of those cases, you might find a thread of context like, oh, we really didn't really drop the ball anywhere, but we could have done a little better in this one thing. Why didn't we do that? Maybe it's your people. Maybe it's uh, it could be anything, right? Right. But it's certainly, uh, obviously, it's a good idea to go back and try and find if there are these commonalities or if there is something that stands out. Or maybe it's just a good a good opportunity, you say, to find your joker. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, listen, thank you, Daniel Lemon. This has been um, fascinating. Before we go, if you just want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can learn more about you. Yeah, sure. So in addition to Talk Triggers, which is uh, available wherever people like to buy books, officially October 2nd, uh, depending when uh, listeners are tuning in, so mm-hmm. October 2nd, but it's available now. TalkTriggers.com is the website for that. And on the startup side, uh, I'm also co-founder of Selective Or, so it's spelled Selective Or, and that is SelectiveOr.com. And uh, there you can learn all about diets you're on and and foods you can eat. So our, our talk trigger is one we're still working on. I'll be very frank, uh, we're a brand new company. So uh, <laughs> that's in process, which is fun. Yeah, well, I'm, I look forward to checking out that because uh, we all need to. Uh... We all need advice around it's so confusing today around diets. I was actually, not to get off topic, but I was looking the other day. There, uh, some people were talking about different diets, and then you go on YouTube and you know it feeds you up something connected with that. And then there's people like that's the most terrible thing you could possibly do to your body, and you're like, well, which is it? Is it really good or is it really terrible? Where's where's the in between? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Listen, thanks, Daniel. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline to CRM. See you all for another expert insight interview really soon. Thank you. See yep. Bye. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.